Hello. So your research supervisor has applauded your recent research accomplishment and urged you to begin writing a journal paper. This is going to be your first research paper. Congratulations. But now comes a difficult part, how to write this paper. I'm going to help you navigate this important stage of your research career. First and foremost, you have to choose an appropriate journal. This choice will depend on the discipline in which your research topic is classified. Some disciplines are broader than others. You may have to consider the relevant subdiscipline in some cases. There may be journals specializing in exactly that subdiscipline. It boils down to an assessment of your potential readership. Narrowly focused research is published in highly specialized journals. Otherwise, choose a less specialized journal. You may even choose a general science magazine if you think your readership is very broad. Then read the editorial board's instructions to authors for that journal. Next, you have to choose the length of the paper. Short papers are sometimes called letters, sometimes short papers. Regular length papers are called full papers. And then there are also review papers. Letters are written these days to announce a result of momentous importance. A letter should be published in as high profile a journal as possible. Some journals contain only letters, which is evident from their names. Optics letters and physical review letters are examples. Short papers often contain incidental results or corollaries of important results. Only some details are provided in short papers. Often these are published in specialized journals. However, the boundary between letters and short papers is often blurred. A full paper is a comprehensive paper. It contains details that may not be available elsewhere. Generally, a full paper must contain enough detail for researchers with some experience to understand it without having to look at related literature. Finally, review papers contain an exhaustive review of a certain topic. The coverage depends on the level of maturity of that topic. A word of advice. Become a knowledgeable guru on a topic before writing a review paper on that topic. Shallow reviews are useless in the internet age, although shallow reviews abound because we are in the age of internet. In a review paper, you must identify and elucidate broad research trends. You must also illuminate the future by pointing out research directions. Absent these two features, a review paper is shallow. Let's get back to the task at hand, writing your first research paper. Review the literature relevant to your research. Spend at least a week doing that. You have to create a context for your research accomplishment. Context is not created simply by citing many papers. Instead, tell your peers a story leading to your work and cite the papers that appear in that story. I'm assuming that after you had commenced a research, you had also begun to learn to write well. How to do that? Read papers written by excellent authors in your discipline and related disciplines. One learns to write well from those who are experts at writing well. Emulate them. Eventually, your distinctive style will emerge and it will evolve as you mature as a researcher. Buy a usage dictionary and read a page every night before you go to sleep. I recommend the Merriam-Webster Dictionary of English Usage. Finally, learn the canons of non-literary composition from experts. I recommend three how-to books. The first is the book, The Elements of Style by Strunk and Byte. The second is the book, The Complete Plain Words by Ernest Gowers. 
Finally, Elaine Bender wrote a modern classic on the most common errors in English usage. Read one of these books, at least skim through one of these books before writing your paper. Afterwards, read that book often. Your writing abilities will continue to improve thereby. Aim to write an interesting manuscript. Your manuscript must report novel research to the best of your knowledge. Your research supervisor will help you emphasize the novelty in your work. Choose an informative but short title. Begin with a working title, but finalize a title only after writing the abstract. The abstract must be written after you have written the main text. The abstract must be comprehensive but short. Write it as a miniature paper that does not refer in any way to the main paper at all. The abstract must have the motivation to undertake your research, the methods used, the chief conclusions and possibilities for future research. It should be between 100 and 200 words in length, depending on the editorial guidelines for the journal you have chosen. After choosing the working title, write the introduction. The introduction must contextualize the research being reported. It must end with a plan of the remainder of the main paper. Break up your manuscript into sections and subsections. Every section and subsection must have a transparent theme reflected in its heading. The concluding section should contain specific and broad conclusions that could be distilled from the results in the previous sections. In addition, do indulge in some speculation as to the implications of these conclusions for future developments and research. An ideal sentence is short, with no more than two verbs and three punctuation marks. Put every verb and its subject noun close to each other. Pay attention to number and tense. Show your enthusiasm by using the active voice. Although the passive voice may be adopted carefully for a few sentences in order to create a specific effect. I advise the use of first person plural rather than the soporific third person. Avoid excessive use of jargon. Precision is important for scientific communication, but too much of jargon restricts the intelligibility to a small community. Resist the urge to acronymize, although two or three acronyms or initialisms in your manuscript may help to shorten it, particularly if they are in common use. Especially avoid two-letter acronyms and unpronunciable ones. Do not often split infinitives, as they are not easy to parse and never use dangling participles. The practice of elegant variation commonly taught in creative writing courses must be avoided for technical and scientific communication. Use only one word for an entity or action and imply just one entity or action by one word throughout the manuscript. Avoid an excess of superlatives and intensifiers. Do not use words such as model, system, and structure with more than one meaning in your manuscript. Resist the temptation to write, it can be easily shown that, or it is trivial or obvious to show that. Also avoid using the adjective well-known. Such constructions are either superfluous or insulting to the reader. Notational clarity is important. Scalars, vectors, and tensors should be clearly distinguishable from one another. Use only one symbol for a quantity. Denote only one quantity by a symbol. Provide units for every quantity with units. SI units are highly preferred, except in some specialized communities. Insert schematics, graphs, and other types of diagrams to explain your work. 
do not provide complicated figures that only you can understand easily. Every figure must be highly relevant to your manuscript. All lettering should be in sufficiently large characters to be legible even when the figures are reduced to the size preferred by the journal you have chosen. Be careful that colored figures are intelligible when printed in black and white or grayscale. Figure in table captions must contain all necessary information for another researcher to reproduce your data. Number every mathematical expression that you set apart from the running text. Equations must be parts of sentences and be punctuated accordingly. Never copy a citation from some other paper or book. Indeed, never cite a publication whose hard copy or PDF you do not possess and have not read. After you have submitted your manuscript to a journal, it will be reviewed by anonymous peer reviewers. The reports will be supplied to you by the editorial board. Treat reviewers with respect. Reviewers donate their valuable time in reviewing. The number of reliable and knowledgeable reviewers is only a small fraction of the number of authors in any discipline. Unless a review is both perfunctory and negative, do not dismiss it casually. Verify every assertion made in the review before revising your manuscript and writing a rebuttal or response to that review. Your research must due to guidelines for ethical conduct in your discipline. But how to write a research paper ethically is a topic for a separate discussion. Thank you for listening to me. Do you have any questions for me?